So now I'm going to go ahead and press Shift S to add another node. And in this next node, I'm going to do some more detail work with another shape, just to show you the different kinds of shapes that are available. So zooming into the image, this time I'm going to choose Polygon. I'm going to click on, and when I do that, I start out with this square shape, and it's a square shape that I can adjust the corners of. So I'm going to drag the corners to conform to this sign here. So that's all well and good, except I can add points to this shape. So if I want to call some attention to or give a bit of a quality to the sign up in the corner, I can go ahead and reshape that polygon. And now perhaps in this case, I want to darken it. I don't want there to be a lot of attention paid to this particular sign. And perhaps I'll also desaturate it. So that's the polygon. Another shape I have at my disposal, if I want to keep working on this scene, is the linear shape. But to show you the linear shape, I'm going to show you another set of shortcuts that are available for adding a new node with a shape already set up. In effect, saving you a couple of clicks so you don't have to turn on the appropriate window controls. If I go up to my nodes menu, I can go ahead and select node plus LPW, linear power window. And when I select that, now I have a new node, and the shape is already turned on for me, ready to use. And what I'm going to do with this shape, the linear power window is kind of like a trapezoid. You can grab any of the sides individually and angle and shape them at will. So with this window, I'm going to create a slash of shadow just off to the side. With the linear power window shape, you have individual softening control over each side of the shape, as you can see here. And now that I've got that done, zooming in, I might go ahead and just darken that. Pull that in. Add some darkening there. So that's something else I can do. The last shape we've got is the curve down here. And for that, again, we can go up to the nodes menu, add node plus PCW. Now, when I add my curve or my power curve operation, no on-screen control initially appears. That's because this is the custom curve. This is the big gun. If you need to do something really special and none of the other shapes are good enough, this is the control that you can use. So once you've enabled a power curve, all you do is click to start adding control points to create the shape that you want. Unfortunately, clicking with the middle mouse button to pan around also triggers the other behavior while you're shape drawing, and that is to close the shape. So whenever you middle mouse button click, the shape will automatically close. This is meant to be a useful shortcut, but it's not too terribly useful when you're trying to pan around the image. Simply undoing gets rid of that unwanted control point 
It's worth noting that if I go to the viewer, I have a larger look at my image. Again, I've closed the shape accidentally by panning the image, so I'll undo. Once I'm in my viewer, I can add more control points at will. Clicking on the first control point closes it up, or as you saw previously, you can middle mouse click and that closes the shape as well. Now that I have this custom shape drawn, I can go back to the color page. You'll see I've got individual inside and outside softness sliders available. I can go ahead and diminish this softness on the outside. I don't want to cause too much of a halo. Perhaps I want to diminish some of the inside softness as well because parts of the softness shape are getting pinched. However, it's worth noting, and I'll go ahead and resize the viewer so I have a little more space. It's worth noting that for the custom curve or the power curve, you can individually adjust the different control points of softness. So if you're looking to create a very custom softening effect, that's something that you can do with ease. These control points all have Bezier handles. Making it easy to create extremely tight shapes, should you need to. And let's say in this case, once I have a satisfactorily isolated car, I want to actually blue up that car a little bit. I want to emphasize the blue tones of the car. Perhaps I want to stretch its contrast even more. I want to really call attention to those glistening highlights. So I stretch out image contrast, cool off the highlights just of the car. And if I shrink down, now you can see the kind of effect that I'm creating. There are going to be times where you're going to be making an adjustment like this and you're going to want to see what the adjustment looks like without the shape. In that case, you can go ahead and click the power window button underneath the viewer Toggling that on and off toggles the shape OSC on and off, but you're just can toggling on and off the visibility. So with that on and off, you can see what the car really looks like. There's another control you're going to want to be available if you're viewing monitor out. If I go up to view, there's this window outline control. And this window outline control actually has three modes that you toggle among. Uh, the first mode shows the window OSC both in the preview, in the GUI, and in video out, so on your monitor, uh, on your broadcast monitor that you're evaluating the image on. The second mode displays the OSC in the GUI preview, but it does not send it to video out, so it won't appear on your monitor. And that can be helpful if you want to make adjustments in the GUI while you're evaluating the, the pure effect on video out. And then the third mode hides the OSC both in the GUI and in video out. So you have your choice of how those shapes are shown. In this case, I'm going to leave it on the default. And here you can see you can stack up quite a few adjustments using multiple shapes in multiple nodes to create the desired effect.